Hi, so today we are going to be talking about the work in chapter 3 which are the chemicals of life! So what are these chemicals? Well, they are our biomolecules and our biomolecules include carbohydrates, proteins, lipids and DNA. Section 4.1 poses the question, asks us what are we made of? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that we are made up of the biomolecules we are made of carbohydrates, proteins and fat, as well as water. Now before we take a look in depth look at each of these biomolecules, we're quickly going to take a look at the atom. The atoms, an atom is the smallest unit of structure in, of an element. Now if you don't know what an element is, go take a look at a periodic table. Elements are substances whose atoms all have the same number of protons and different atoms of elements can form molecules A molecule is a group of atoms bonded together but the difference is a molecule can be made up of an atom of carbon, an atom of hydrogen, an atom of oxygen uh, bonded together and that will form a molecule whereas an element will always be of the same atoms. The elements are made up of the same atoms. They will only be carbon atoms, or only be oxygen atoms, or only be hydrogen atoms. Let's take a look at a carbon atom. So here we have a carbon atom. This is our atom. And as you can see, the atom is made up of, has a central, which looks like the nucleus, which is the um, pro which contains our protons and our neutrons and these are our electron electrons now electrons can interact with other atoms uh, this carbon atom here um, and they can interact and it forms a bond um, and that's joining these two and that will join these two carbon atoms together to form a carbon chain and this can for, can link many carbons together in this manner to form the skeleton of a molecule. Now the glucose molecule is made up of six carbon atoms joined together. Um, it will look like something like this, two, three, four, five, six, and then it has 12 hydrogens attached. So our hydrogens will attach to our molecule and it has six oxygen molecules attached to that. That is just some background info on um, atoms and elements and molecules. Next we're going to be taking a look at water. What is the importance of water in our body? Because our bodies as you know are mostly made up of water. Well water allows metabolism to, place, to take place um, and how that happens is water allows substances to be dissolved in it and through random movement these substances can come into contact with each other and react and this is how a lot of our metabolic reactions take place. Now metabolism is simply metachemical reactions inside living organisms such as our own bodies. Plain and simple, easy peasy. Examples of functions of water in your body can be your blood plasma, um, can be dissolved enzymes and nutrients in GLT and water also helps get rid of waste products. Next we're going to take a look at carbohydrates. They are also made up of our elements carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So we've got elements of those, those three elements. Um, now it's very important to understand some naming, uh, the naming system in when we talk about uh, carbohydrates. Uh, in, when we speak about carbohydrates, we take a look at what's known as monosaccharides, disaccharides and trisaccharides. Now, monosaccharide, mono means one and saccharide means sugar, so it simply means one sugar, makes sense. Now, monosaccharide is a sugar in its simplest form. For example, glucose is a monosaccharide. It's one molecule. It can't be broken out further. If it was broken out further, it would not be a glucose molecule. So it's the simplest form that a sugar can be found in. Another example of a monosaccharide is fructose. And we've also got disaccharides. Di is two and saccharide is sugar. So we've got two sugars. And examples of disaccharides are 
if you take a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule and you join them together, you get what's known as sucrose. And sucrose we know as the sugar that you put over your food, table sugar. Lastly, we've got what's known as a polysaccharide, where poly means many sugars. So it's many sugars joined together in a chain to form a bigger, larger molecule. Um, now plants store Plants, have, plants and animals have different types of polysaccharides. Plants have what's known as starch or, and cellulose. Cellulose is found in the cell wall and starch is a storage form of sugars in plants. In animals, we don't have starch or cellulose, we've got glycogen, which is glucose molecules that are joined together so that the so that your body can store it, the energy from those glucose for later use. Now, it's very important to know that plants use glucose in respiration. They transport sucrose around between cells and they store starch. In animals, glucose is tra transported around between cells and glycogen is the storage form. Testing for carbohydrates are really simple. We've got our solution which contains a suspected carbohydrate. In this case, we've got a glucose, maltose, or it can be any reducing sugar. And a reducing sugar is simply a monosaccharide. Now, if we add Benedict's reagent to this solution and we add heat, we will see a series of color changes. The solution will change from blue to green to yellow orange to red and that is a positive result in the benedict solution that means there is a reducing sugar present if a reducing sugar is not present and there's no color change here we know that this solution does not contain any reducing sugars testing for starch is really straightforward for example all you do is you take a vegetable for example a potato which we know contains starch if we add a drop of iodine onto potato uh, we will see a blue black color and this indicates that starch is present if there's no color and the starch uh, if the iodine stays an orange brown color which is the color of the actual iodine we know starch is not pre present next we're going to be talking about fats or lipids now fats are also made up of our same three elements, carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. Fats are generally insoluble and fats are insoluble and water and fats that are liquid at room temperature are generally called oils like olive oil for example. Now the function of fats, fats are very high in energy so they can be a valuable energy source but fat also uh, performs a function in our body and that is to insulate us, they insulate our organs they keep them protected. We'll quickly be taking a look at it, how to test for fats. So how do we test for fats and oils? Well, if we have our chopped food, these particles here, and we place them in a beaker with ethanol. If we shake this beaker, we will allow the ethanol to dissolve the lipids from the food into the solution. What we can do then, is we can pour our ethanol, pour or strain the food out, pour the ethanol into a test tube um, full of water. So now we've got our ethanol and our water in the test tube. If we shake this mixture, we shake, we shake it up. Um, our mixture will, uh, our mixture will turn a transparent if there's no fat, and it will turn opaque white if fat is present. Next, we're going to be talking about proteins, and proteins are made up of five elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Those are important, you have to remember those. Proteins are formed by the linkage of amino acids together in a chain. There are 20 different types of amino acids, but proteins can be formed by linking any of these 20 in any different order. So let's pretend little, these little pieces of paper are amino acids. We've got the amino acid valine, for example. We've got a, another amino acid. We've got the same another amino acid. We've got another valine. And then here we have another amino acid. 
Here we have the amino acid glutamine and here we have the amino acid oh well, serine. So pretend for a minute that these little pieces of aces represent our amino acids. Now what can happen is these amino acids can be joined together in a chain to form a protein. The order of the amino acids determine the type of protein formed. So we can have the same amino acids joined together in a different order and that will result in a different type of protein. Now what happens when these chains of amino acids get joined together is that certain amino acids have an attractive force to other amino acids and what that does it actually changes the shape of uh, this chain to form a three-dimensional structure. So here we have valine that's attracted to this green amino acid so the chain will actually bend and change shape like this into a three-dimensional structure. This is not the actual structure of a protein by the way, this is just a representation. But just to illustrate a point, we'll take a look at the other chain of amino, or other protein which is the chain of amino acids here we have another valine but here it will be attracted to a different amino acid and it will affect the shape of our protein now here we have two completely different amino acids even though some of the amino acids are the same the order that they are in is different and that will result in a different structure the shape of our um, protein will affect the function of, of said protein. Uh, an example would be uh, a hemoglobin molecule which has a biconcave disc shape. Now this is this allows hemoglobin or red blood cells to deliver oxygen to our tissues. Lastly we'll be taking a look at DNA which is deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA makes up our genes and our chromosomes. Now how it works in DNA, DNA forms what is known as a double helix and you will notice if you look at pictures that there are little symbols T, G, U and C on these strands. Now these symbols stand for specific base pairs. Thymine, T stands for thymine, C stands for cytosine, A stands for adenine, G stands for guanine. It's important to note that Thymine will always link to adenine and cytosine will always link to guanine. Now it's important to note that T will always link to A and C will always link to G. This is how a DNA sequence forms a code for proteins and these, the proteins being produced, the DNA gives instructions for certain proteins to be produced through this uh, code and this results in all your features. For example, your, the color of your eyes, uh, it's all determined by DNA because it's, it goes about the type of proteins that's produced from the coding of the DNA. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let's go take a look at some past papers. Alright, let's take a look at question 13. The diagram shows two food tests carried out in a solution X. So here we have solution X and here we have solution X as well. In our first test, we, we see that Barrett solution is being added. Now, I didn't go through the Barrett uh, test, that is, but that is the test for proteins and it's a really straightforward test. Uh, if you add copper sulfate to a solution and contains proteins, it will change color and it will become purple. Uh, so here we know solution X because it's changed purple we know that it must contain protein so either that one or that one will be our options that we will be looking at and if we take a look at uh, test 2 over on this side we see Benedict solution is being added and when our heat is added uh, the solution turns a red color now we know Benedict solution test for sugars and thus uh, a positive result is indicated when there's a red color. So we know in this test 1 solution X is protein and in test 2 
solution X is sugar so our answer will be B. Next we'll be taking a look at question 8 over here. Question asks us which element is found in proteins but not in carbohydrate. As I said it's very important to know what elements in, are found in what uh, bio, in different biomolecules. So we know proteins contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. Carbohydrates on the other hand only contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So we know nitrogen is the one only found in proteins. Here we see another question which asks us to identify the chemicals found in proteins. Uh, proteins contain carbon, they contain hydrogen, they contain oxygen and nitrogen. They also contain sulfur, where sulfur is not listed here. Um, we can see the one that ticks all the boxes is A, so that would be our answer. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Good luck with the studying and go get those good ones.